Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about electric fields and electric charges. We're going to need these to work out exactly what electricity is and how we measure it. To begin with, we're going to be looking at electric charge. Now, it's impossible to have electricity of any sort without electric charge. Electricity is defined in terms of electric charge. As we can see, electricity can produce some rather spectacular effects. So, electricity, by definition, describes the movement of little electrically charged particles. By particles, I just mean little tiny entities. We usually have lots of them when we look at uh, an electric phenomenon. We can explain electric phenomena with either electrostatics, which means stationary electric charges, or electrodynamics, which means moving charges, right? Static means stationary, and dynamic means moving. So how exactly do we measure electric charge? That might be a bit of a tricky one. We can't use kilograms, we can't use meters, and we can't use seconds. We can't say something like, this plastic comb has two kilograms of electric charge on it. It wouldn't make sense. The comb already has a mass, it already has a length, and it's already existing for a number of seconds. So we can't use any of these units to measure electric charge. So we're going to need a new unit to measure this fundamental quantity of electric charge something that we haven't used before. What we will measure it in is coulombs. Algebraically, we represent ch electric charge by a lowercase q, right? So, in the same way that we use L for length and we measure it in meters, or T for time and measure it in seconds, we're going to use Q for charge and measure it in coulombs. All right? Now, electric charge can either be positive or negative. So we can have an object with an electric charge of positive one coulomb or an electric charge of negative one coulomb, that sort of thing. Now, when an electric charge passes through a circuit, we can think of it as a stream of tiny little particles, tiny little things that are moving. And each of these little particles has an electric charge, right? And so when all these millions and millions of tiny particles are moving through a wire, that's what creates uh, the electric current in a circuit. We measure electric current, that is the movement of the charged particles, uh, in amperes. Algebraically, we represent it with uh, an uppercase I. All right. So charge is lowercase Q and it's measured in coulombs. And current, that's the flow of charge, is measured with uppercase I in amperes, or sometimes just amps for short. Now, when an electric charge is moving through a wire at a rate of exactly one coulomb per second, as we can see in this diagram, this is what we call one ampere, or one amp. So this is how the terms relate to each other. Uh, if we want, we can write an equation to represent this. Electric current, I, equals the change in electric charge, delta Q, divided by the change in time, delta T. So if we were to graph um, the electric charge over time, then the slope of the graph, rise over run, uh, change in charge over change in time, would give us the current flowing at that point in time. Now it turns out that we can't get arbitrarily small charges. That is, we can't uh, pick a charge and get a charge that's closer to zero than the first charge. We can do this for a lot of charges. We can say that if we want to get closer to zero than one coulomb, all we need is half a coulomb. 
If we want to get closer to zero than half a coulomb, all we need is a quarter of a coulomb. But here's the thing, there is a smallest possible charge that we can't get any smaller than, right? We can't have half of this value. So this value is called E, or the elementary charge, and it has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. If we were to write it out in full, we would need 19 zeros before the 1 6. So it's a very, very small amount of electric charge indeed. Uh, this is the electric charge on an electron, which is one of the constituents of the atom. The proton, which is another constituent of the atom, has the same charge, but instead of the proton having a negative charge, it has a positive charge. All electric charges are just uh, little units of this charge all added together. That is, all electric charges are multiples of the elementary charge, right? If you have exactly one coulomb, that's actually a whole bunch of elementary charges added up together, billions and billions of little elementary charges, until we reach a charge of one coulomb. Electric charges arise when an object has more electrons than protons, or vice versa, that is, more protons than electrons. If they have the same amounts, then the charge will cancel out. So when the numbers of each particle are exactly equal, the object will have no net charge, because every uh, proton that has a charge of positive 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 is cancelled out by an electron that has a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to the power 19. Right? So all electric charges are due to uh, an imbalance between the number of protons and the number of electrons in a material. So that's the end of the theory. We've learned a bit about electric charge and electric current. Let's go on to some questions to see if you've got it all down. Question 1. What is the conventional algebraic symbol and unit of measurement for electric charge? Is it I and coulombs, I and amperes, Q and coulombs, or Q and amperes? Now one of these will measure electric current and one will measure electric charge. The question is asking for electric charge. So in this case, the answer is going to be C. We measure electric charge in coulombs and represent it with, an, uh, with a lowercase q. If the question was asking about electric current instead, then the answer would have been b. We measure electric current as an uppercase i uh, in amperes, or amps for short. Question 2. What is the smallest possible unit of electric charge? Is it exactly one coulomb, the charge on an electron, the flow of charge per second in a circuit with infinite resistance, or the flow of charge per second in a circuit with no resistance. Let's go through our options. Exactly one coulomb is in fact quite a large electric charge. Uh, most of the electric charges you work with in a laboratory will be a lot smaller than one coulomb. In fact, most of the electric currents that you deal with will be smaller than one ampere, that is, one coulomb per second. Uh, C says the flow of charge per second in a circuit with infinite resistance. Now we'll learn later that a circuit with infinite resistance has no current flowing, and so we get no rate of change of charge per second. So this can't be right. D states the flow of charge per second in a circuit with no resistance. Now in this case, the flow of charge per second can be extremely large, higher even than one coulomb per second. Uh, so D is going to be too large. The last remaining option is B, the charge in an electron. An electron is a tiny particle found in atoms with a very, very small electric charge. Now it turns out that it's impossible to have an electric charge smaller than the electron charge because uh, all electric charges r arise because of a discrepancy between the protons and the electrons in a substance. So, B is the correct answer. 
We also represent the charge in an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19, as E, or the elementary charge. Question 3. Define 1 Coulomb. So we can do this in two different ways. We can define the Coulomb in terms of uh, electric current, or we can define Coulomb in terms of how many electrons we need to get that charge. So let's write down both answers. 1 Coulomb is the amount of electric charge that passes through a wire every second when there is a current of 1 ampere in the wire. This makes sense, right? We know that current equals change in charge over change in time. So rearranging the equation, we have a charge, or change in charge, equals the current times the change in time, right? Therefore, if we have one ampere and we wait one second, a charge of one coulomb will pass through the wire. Now, what was the other definition we had? We define a coulomb in terms of the elementary charge. We can define a coulomb so that the charge in an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And so all we need to do is take uh, 1 divided by this number, and this will tell us how many electrons are in 1 coulomb. Right? And so this is how we can define 1 coulomb of electric charge. Question 4. An object contains 8 times 10 to the power 17 more electrons than protons. Calculate the charge on it. And here we have the fundamental charge, or the, the charge on an electron. Now, if the object contains 8 times 10 to the 17 more electrons than protons, that means that there are only 8 times 10 to the 17 electrons that aren't cancelled out by protons. We can ignore the rest of the electrons. They won't make a difference to our answer. So, all we need to do is figure out the total charge on these excess electrons. How do we do that? Well, we have this charge per electron and this many electrons. So we can multiply charge per electrons by electrons to cancel out electrons and leave us with charge. So an electron has a charge of this number. Uh, we multiply them together and we end up with minus 0.128 coulombs. So our answer is the total charge on the object is negative 0.128 coulombs. Uh, you might remember that with things like length and time, we often have to uh, turn things into positive numbers. Not so for electric charge. Electric charge can be positive or negative. Question 5. A current of 1.5 amps flows through an electric circuit, powering a small light bulb. How many electrons flow through the light bulb every second? Now the key to answering this question is this 1.5 amps. This means that every second, 1.5 coulombs flow through that light bulb. So 1.5 amps equals 1.5 coulombs per second, right? Now the question asks how many electrons flow through the light bulb per second. So how many electrons do we need to make up 1.5 coulombs? Well, it shouldn't be too hard to work out especially if the question gives us the elementary charge right here. So, uh, if we get 9.375 uh, times 10 to the 18 electrons, we end up with a charge of 1.5 coulombs. We can work this out using this simple division here. 1.5 coulombs divided by 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs per electron. And because we have a current that's positive 1.5, it simply means that the electrons will be moving in the opposite direction. 
So this many electrons flow through the light bulb every second. And in fact, they flow through the light bulb in an opposite direction to the electric current. So that's the end of the questions. We've learned about electric current and electric charge. Remember that uh, electric current is the rate of electric charge per time. In the next section, we'll be looking uh, more at how electric current works.